Oh, look at that thing. There it is, the Weston push bumper. Yeah, that's a floor jack and a trash can behind it. Look at how big this thing is. That's my lawnmower. I mean, this thing is huge. I mean, it's like, that's a traffic cone. This thing is huge. I can't wait to get it out of the box. Yeah, all right guys, so after ripping through all this cardboard and pulling off some outer stuff, there it is. I still have some of the uh, wrapping on there, but that's because I don't want to scratch it up, banging it off the ground and things, but man, look at that bad boy. And yeah, that's rubber. So if I ever need to shove one of my broke cars down the road, I can do it. Or anybody else's broke car, I guess. If, I, if I'm feeling good, I guess. Oh, look at that bad boy, that thing is massive. Just massive. All right, so I cracked open the box and three of the parts are in green bags and then three of the uh, parts here are in clear bags. And if I sort of read the instructions right, I think the green bags are driver's side and the clear bags are passenger side. So they, they do make a little bit of effort here to make this a little bit easier. And then of course we got a bag of bolts. So this thing, this thing, yep, there you go, instructions. And uh, I guess I'll uh, get to working on this. All right, so if I'm looking at this correctly, these two bigger brackets are gonna be the lower mounting brackets. And then you have a pair of brackets here. And depending on the model year of your truck will depend on which bracket you use. So the skinnier one here uh, appears to be used on 2015 through 2017, and then these are 2018 plus. So that's uh, according to this, so. There you go. You see this one's longer and skinnier, kind of like this one is. And the other one here is a little bit shorter and I guess fatter, like this one. Well, I guess I should be showing this one and this one since uh, those drawings reflect these two. But yeah, basically I'm not gonna be using this bracket or this bracket because this is for slightly older trucks. So eh, extra scrap steel, I guess. All right, so laying out all the bolts looks pretty simple. And you got six of these hex head things, or I guess Allen key things, I guess you could say. They give you an Allen key. A uh, couple little skinny bolts, couple, uh, four fatter bolts. And it's kind of obvious what goes with what, because there's four of these, and there's four sets of washers and lock washers. Two of those, and two sets of washers and lock washers. Six of these, and six of these, uh, I don't know what you call these things. They're like concave washers or something. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure there's a proper name for it, but I'm not that guy. Uh, might even have a name up there somewhere. Let's see. Oh, cupped washer. There you go. It's a cupped washer. All right, guys. So, uh, just finished cleaning the front end of the F-150 since there's some places there that I will probably never be able to easily access ever again once the grill guard goes on. And yep, the, the Impala still lives. And let's see. And I know one of you was wondering where the Crown Vic went. It, it still exists. It's, it's back there. It's still alive. It hasn't gone anywhere. Got the pickup truck back in the garage. Now it's time to start dismantling things according to the instructions. Yeah, I actually read the instructions. The tow hook on both sides. Tow hooks, I guess I should say, have to come off. That's where one of the mounting brackets go. So now I gotta figure out how to get to the mounting bolts for the tow hooks, which I think is underneath of that air dam bearing, whatever you wanna call it thing, the black strip that half the people that own F-150s removed. So I'm gonna take that lower air dam off. I don't know if you can see, but if it'll focus, let's see if it'll focus, there we go. There's like 10 of those little bolts kinda all along here. And if I pull that lower air dam off, it'll allow me to get my big head up underneath the bumper to see what I'm doing while I'm on the creeper. And just for reference, those uh, bolts right there that'll focus are 10 millimeter. All right, I stand corrected. There's about eight of them. There's four on each side. So there's, let me see if I can get my finger in here. 
that one doesn't have a bolt, that one does. So one, two, three, four on this side, and then you got the license plate mount. And then there's one, two, three, four. So I'll pull those and the lower air dam will come off. All right, once you get all the bolts off, kind of on the side here, there's just a little clip piece that you just push on from the inside and it'll pop free from this. And then down here's another one somewhere. Oh, where are you at? Probably here-ish. I don't even know if it's my finger in there, but basically you just kind of push on the clip a little bit and um, down she comes. So uh, there you go, there's the uh, lower air dam off the front of the truck. I know a lot of guys like to pull it off just for the aesthetic reasons of making it look pretty nice. Oh yeah, there you go. There's the air dam laying on the ground. And yeah, it kind of makes it look more like a bumper and less plasticky. I don't know, I'll, I'm probably going to put it back on. I don't know, I think it supposedly helps with aerodynamics or something, but I mean, not that I care about aerodynamics putting a 100 pound grill guard on the front, but whatever. So I don't make myself completely insane. There's all my mounting hardware with the air dam. On the front of the truck, there are two plastic covers. These need to come off to gain access to more of the mounting hardware. From, from what I've been told, I guess this, you can just kinda jam a screwdriver in here and kinda try not to scratch the shit out of this thing. Maybe I should put some tape on the uh, tip of the screwdriver here. Yeah, that's probably the smarter way to do this. Basically stick the tip in and there it goes. If I can get it completely off. I'm just not really sure where the clips are, so I'm trying not to break it too much. Oh, there we go. I guess this clip over here was the one I wasn't expecting. Well, there you go. Couple more mounting bolts. Hey, look, it says top. You know, with hindsight being 2020 and all, longer screwdriver probably would have been a smarter way to do that. You know, leverage? Yeah. All right, so there we go. The two covers are off. I think the thing in the middle comes off too, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, so the other thing I did do is disconnect the fog lights. There's a plug on the back side. It's kind of awkward to get to, but it unplugs like every other electrical plug, a little clip on. Unhook the clip, it comes apart. But there are, according to the interwebs, two bolts on either side on the front, and then there's one on the inside. So this is a 21 millimeter. Like I said, there's two here. And then if you go in here and spin around, you can see where I just took the other one off. So that's the third one that's on each side. All right, so six nuts later, off it goes. So much easier to see now. There's a couple of spots for the bumper to hook to here. And then I guess on the back side, that's where these other pieces came into. And then uh, side note, right there, uh, there in that hole on both sides is a little connector piece to hold the wiring for the fog light on. So there you go. But now I have access to the uh, actual tow hook. And I now have access to this piece of rubber too so I can get it off, or plastic or whatever the heck that thing is. Now I'm not super excited about this, but I do have to take the tow hooks off to make this thing work. All right, so this bolt, or these two bolts underneath of here, 15 millimeter. And uh, right about now is the time that I tell you guys that I am not a certified mechanic. I don't know what I'm doing, and if you follow this instruction, you may or may not destroy your own vehicle. Remember that. Good luck. Enjoy. This is for entertainment purposes only. Oh, yeah. Florida man. All right. If you had factory tow hooks, you'll be left over with this, I don't know what the heck you call that, nut plate? I don't know. But basically, the tow ring comes off, or tow hook comes off, and you're left with this piece that is very loose and free. You're supposed to reuse this, and if you don't have it, they have one in the kit. But if you have the factory one, they want you to reuse it. And basically what you'll do is you'll attach the mounting bracket loosely, just like this, on both sides. Since I already attached uh, the one side, basically you'll take the little lock washer, the one that's split, 
put it on there and the regular washer regular washer the mount and uh, bolt it up to that plate if you didn't have one they've got these extra ones right here that you can use that come in the kit um, for me this will just be extra scrap metal I guess so there you go it's my two lower mounting brackets as I said there's a D on one and uh, well I thought it was an R but it's actually a P for passenger so driver passenger kind of makes it a little bit easier in case you get confused because um, I know some people have a hard time looking at pictures and kind of seeing what the picture is trying to tell them but there you go uh, loosely mounted and we'll move on to the next step all right guys so I already took the bumper off and this is where the instructions start getting a little weird and the diagrams don't really I don't know they don't really help a whole lot I guess you could say but uh, from what I gather after you take the bumper off up here it kind of looks like there's a couple of bolts and looks like they want you to take this one off and then on this side I want you to take this one off so there's two and it kind of looks like they want you to take the one that's um, further to the outside of the vehicle I guess is the right way to say that because that's the outer edge of the vehicle and then over there is the outer edge of the vehicle and there's two bolts on the back side of this so it looks like the one that's closer to the outside on the driver's side and the one that's closer to the outside on the passenger side and then uh, yeah I guess we'll see where these mounting bolts go but apparently these two are supposed to be 39 and 3 quarters inches apart and directly over that rubber I guess yes this is rubber I thought it was plastic but it's actually rubber oh and in case you're wondering this is a 13 millimeter on the back side of the bumper so as you look at the instructions here there are two sets of instructions I've got a 2019 so I got to follow the instructions for the 2018 model and uh, that means I got to get remember I had a pair of these longer skinnier bolts so I guess we will follow the order so bolt I guess lock washer regular washer and then I'm going to need I guess whichever one uses the passenger side so this one and oh I gotta get the spacer out of this bag and then uh, the spacer goes on the back side of this piece and then the bolts go through so on and so on so here's the bumper again passenger side goes here there's your spacer washers bolt I'll go ahead and tighten this down and then we'll repeat for the driver's side over there all right so there we go there's the front of the bumper I got the two mounting brackets on um, one thing you might want to be aware of is that this thing right here is rubber so what I did is I just kind of smashed it down and then tightened this piece down on top of it I don't know if that's the right way to do it but that's how I made it work um, I guess we will try to put this thing on the front of the truck and uh, see if it all lines up. Oh, yeah. All right, so we've got the bumper sort of back on. You see the mounting brackets right here. So now what I'm going to have to do is start tightening everything down, but i got to kind of make sure that this push bumper is going to sort of line up. All right, so since this part was really hard to film, I didn't film it, but basically you line the brackets up with the bumper and one two three I guess I should put that plastic cover back on and then there's three more on the other side that you got to get cinched down but uh, what I'll have to do is finish pulling all this crusty whatever the packaging material off and then figure out if it's lined up right and uh, we should be good to go all right now that I'm back under here just got to make sure everything's tight push this little piece back into the little plastic holder and reconnect my fog light on both sides and then I can rip all this packaging off and be good to go all right, so this, the install is basically complete. What I'm going to do is reattach that lower fairing, which people will probably curse at me for doing, but I don't care. Uh, and yeah, that, that should be it. And we'll take some pictures of it and show you guys out in the uh, sun. All right, guys, there you go. That's what it looks like sitting with the Impala. What do you guys think? Let me know. I'll go put it over there next to the Crown Vic so you can see it over there sitting with the Vic, too. All right, guys, there you go sitting with the crown vic let me know your thoughts that's right let me know your thoughts both got the wraparound push bumpers because yes technically the winston is a push bumper it's got the uh the rubber coating on it right here 
you can see, yeah, you might be able to see it right there. You can see how it's kind of just attached. So yeah. Let me know your thoughts, guys. I think it looks pretty good. Definitely gonna protect the front end real well. And anytime you know, garbage guys leave the uh, trash can in front of my driveway, I can just punt it out of the way now. <laughs> and I won't even feel bad about it. <laughs> it's okay, the county owns a trash can, don't care. Yeah, that's a lawnmower tree ornament. And that's my lawnmower. Granted, this is an X300, see right here. And well, I mean, this one's kind of close. X390, but eh, pretty stinking, pretty stinking close. Yeah. Um, does, does this make me a redneck? Does it? Does it?